Hi everyone, John Garrett here from hypertransitory.com and uh, today I'm going to be doing a tutorial uh, on how I created this picture here for my online novel True Tales of the Saurian Order and this character is, uh, is Brielle and she hasn't quite made it into the story yet but she'll be turning up pretty soon and I just want to do a walkthrough on how I, uh, how I create the artwork for that, that series. Um, I use a combination of 3D and Photoshop to get this done. So uh, let's begin um, with the uh, the 3D portion which is done in a program called Daz Studio and I'll just walk through my materials. Now those of you that know Daz Studio uh, you know that uh, this is a program where you don't actually create the, the objects, you don't model the objects. You pose and position pre-existing models and objects that uh, you can either buy from Daz uh, 3D or you can you can buy from other websites or if someone creates one for you you can position it and light it and, and such so uh, what I'm using here to make this figure uh, Victoria here is the is the uh, stock model that comes with the program it's she's free so we're gonna start with her start with Victoria and I'm gonna turn Victoria into Katie um, and then I'm going to use this hair. I'm going to use this armor for the character, uh, the bodysuit, and finally these boots are going to be used for uh, for the character. And I've already installed all this stuff. Obviously, I've made the picture, but I just want to walk through uh, installing one of the items, it's just so you can see how I go about doing that. Um, let me go here to my finder, and let's just start here. Uh, when you install something into Daz Studio, especially on the Mac, it can be a bit of an annoyance. Uh, so this is the standard installer that you're going to get. I'll accept the agreement here. Now here's where you might get tripped up. Um, I'm using Daz 3. I also have Daz 2 on my computer. So you can see here that this is defaulting to Daz 2. I need to now pick uh, my Daz 3 content folder. What I've done is I took that content folder and I just moved it into my sidebar. So uh, on the Mac that's fairly easy to do. I can just take any folder and drag it right in there. So that's always right at the top and I uh, don't have to go hunting for it and tracking it down every time. I can just go ahead and click on it. I know that's where it goes. Now another thing that Mac users need to know, um, it's going to put everything in this runtime. Actually, sometimes the installer will report that it's going to create a new runtime folder. So that's a little bit of a fearful proposition for Mac users because when, if I took a runtime and I dropped it on top of this one, first thing it's going to do is erase this first one and replace it with the new one. Now that's how the Mac does things in its file structure. But in Windows and Linux, if I took a folder with the same name and dropped it on top of that, it would merge that stuff together. So that's what Daz Studio is doing here. It's going to merge all this stuff. And it's not expected behavior on the Mac, but, but that's what's happening, so you don't have to really worry about it. So I'm going to click this. This is where it's going. Choose that. All right, I got a new path there. And go ahead and click Next. So um, this is going to install. It's going to give me a README file once it gets done. And, and normally I do take the time to go ahead and take a look at the, uh, at the README and usually it's going to give you um, a chance to see here it says view readme you should probably just go ahead and view it it's going to tell me where to find that prop that object that I just installed so I know I'm going to go to my figures folder and and uh, you know you can pretty much start from there now navigating the content management in, in Daz is kind of a tricky subject and a lot of people have their own different ways of doing that. Um, like what I like to do, when you install something, you have to first tell Daz that it is there. So what I'll do first is I'll go to Edit Preferences. I'll just go and pick up the path to my content folder, which is here. Double click that. And I'll just copy it, Command C, Control C on Windows. Cancel back out of there. And I just want to get that path so when it's time for me to search, I can go in here and paste that path in here because right now I've just got this and that is going to search everywhere every drive I've got and I got some pretty big drives so it's going to take a long time 
so what I like to do is just narrow that down, paste in this path here, tell it to do the search, and it's only searching that one place where I know I put it, so it doesn't have to search every other folder uh, of my music and other crap that I've got um, where I know I didn't put it. So, I mean, I still have a bunch of crap, so it, it's going to take a little while here. But that's kind of a thing that happens a lot. Of somebody installs something and they're, you know, where is it? Well, you got to tell Daz to look for it first. And once you do that, um, usually you can move this stuff around in here if you want to. I don't really do it. I know I should. I know I should change it and, and order it. Uh, in a more convenient way for myself, but I, I usually just want to get working and I find it and then next thing I know I'm loading the objects and such. So um, let's wait for this to finish here and then I'll be able to um, go and get started building that character. I mean, I already installed those boots anyway, but I just wanted to show you guys how it's going to look. Okay, here we go. So I click OK on that, and um, we're going to want to get started by loading the first model, and that's going to be uh, the Victoria model. So we need her as a base to start with. So I need to go to my DAS people um, in my content management here. This is my scene tab. Here's where all my stuff is at. So I'm going to go, I'm going to find DAS people, and I'm going to scroll down and pick Victoria. Um, let's double click her and she's gonna load up in here and uh, you know we just need her to start with we're gonna turn her into Katie the very next thing as we can see I, I've mentioned in some of my other DAS articles that sometimes the progress bar goes backwards <laughs> uh, that's the only program I've ever seen where that happens but uh, usually happens when you're saving um, you get all the way to like 95% and then it goes back down to 40. Wow, I've, I've very, very rarely seen that. Actually, I've never seen it in any other program except for this one. So, okay, Victoria is now loaded. This is our stock basic free model. Um, what I'm going to do with her, um, what I like to do is, is position her so I can see everything. So I'm going to take her translation over here in my parameters. I'm going to move her back a little bit just so everything's in the window. Now I can move around here too. Um, this is me moving the camera, the camera view instead of moving the model. And I can, you know, swivel around and tilt. But what I want to do, this bottom button here resets the camera and I just want her to be in view whenever I reset the camera so I don't have to uh, move around too much. And yes, I'm, I can grab these handles and I can move around that way too. I can even grab in between here, move her up and around. But I like her right there. And now we got to make the magic happen here. Let's go back to my content. Now, when I want to apply materials, um, the Katie figure is really just a bunch of materials that are applied on top of this to change her into a different person. Um, and also morphs as well. And morphs are, are deforming the the mesh to create different features and different sizes of the mesh. But I'm going to uh, look in here in my dad's Victoria folder, and she's got materials for elite characters, and Katie is an elite character. All right, so now here's all the options for Katie, and I can pick and choose these. I don't have to choose all of them, but conveniently, this is this top one has all. In there, and a lot of these elite characters haven't apply all, so that's what I'm going to do. Um, no reason to do it piecemeal, and we'll let that load up, and she's going to transform into a different figure. Okay, we can see that's that's pretty different. So let's start loading her up with uh, all of her props and such. I need to get some hair on her. Um, so let me back up here, and I think I need to go in here to get my hair. Yes, that's the hair I want. Normally, when you have the figure selected and you, you know, click on hair or prop or something, it normally shows up 
on top of it, you know, on top of the figure where it should go. But some products, for whatever reason, they, they don't. So what you have to do is then either parent it yourself. I could take this hair and drag it, uh, you know, below the head and fit it in there. But what I'm going to do here is select that hair and I'm going to go over to my parameters over here. I'm going to close up transform. That's in the way. Under my miscellaneous, I have a fit to option. So when I click on that, there's only one other object and I'm going to tell it to fit to Victoria. And there we go. Now the hair is on the Victoria figure. So, and, and by the way, this button here zooms up on whatever you have selected. So, you know, whatever I select and I click that button, it's going to zoom right up on it. And we can see what that, what that hair is looking like. I mean, well, it doesn't look so good now because it's, it's not looking, it's not rendered. You know, it's not trying to use too much power and uh, computational power to render that for us. It's just a preview of what it will look like. So to continue on, let's uh, reselect Victoria. I've got the whole thing selected. Go back to my content. I got to go get her some clothes here. So um, where am I at here? Oh, let's go on my figures. And I got to get that sentry armor. Now, unfortunately, this does not have an all setting. So I got to go through one at a time and I have to start adding these things to her. And we'll start seeing them pop up one at a time. And let's get her some boots here. And you can see how these things are popping up and they're just, they're going right where they're supposed to go. I mean, some, you know, really well-made things just do that. Other things do not for whatever reason. You have to put them there yourself. It's not that big of a deal as long as you know to go over to your parameters under your miscellaneous and choose the fit to option. So I think we only got a couple more things here to deal with. And then let's get this thing here. Okay, well, I had to uh, break this video up for the YouTube 15-minute time limit. So uh, that's the end for now, but uh, the, the second part of this uh, should be up and uh, right there in my channel. So go ahead and check that out, and we can finish up the first part of uh, the character design in Daz Studio. Thanks for watching.